that. Next thing is your video sources. This is actually going to tell Myth TV what channels you have available. And this is done through Schedules Direct. Schedules Direct is a website that gives us this tuning information, all the guide information. It used to be through another uh, through another website, but they shut down and no longer wanted to support Myth TV, so Schedules Direct came about from a bunch of people that, from Myth TV programmers, I believe. And it does cost money. It's $20 a year. Not that much, really, for getting un as much channel guide information as you want. I'm just going to, here's, I have four sources here. You can't set up the same source twice. Like I actually have my real cable is just this one, is just Time Warner Digital, and that would be great if I could set it up four times and set it to four different uh, inputs. But it's not the case. You can't do that. So I have a, a regular analog one for my analog tuner. My digital one is for my uh, HVR, the HD PVR. I have another digital one for um, this is actually for uh, my 1600, my HVR 1600, as well as my HD Home Run, because both of those are plugged into cable using QAM, and so they uh, don't really worry about it. Let's just go right into, I'm going to show you, when you're on the site, you have to set, set up an account, set up your sources, and then in my, this is the one for my HD PVR, which plugs directly into my cable box. Uh, load that guy oh sorry this is the wrong one that one just shows all my channels this one is actually for my HD PVR and you can see I have a bunch of channels here that are grayed out these are channels I either don't want to see or I don't actually get and for most of these I picked them because I don't want to see them because they're also available down here in the 100 channel range and so I don't really care about the straight the earlier ones and then here's a bunch of channels I don't get for uh, pay-per-view sports premium channels all that kind of stuff it's just stuff I don't want to see or don't get so don't worry about blocking these out yet just go to schedules direct set up at least one uh, one lineup and then head back over to myth TV and here's where you're gonna add the video source and so for me my HD home run is right here and this one, I all I got to do is tell it where I'm getting my listings. If they're over the air, don't use a listing. There's a bunch of different ones for different countries. Luckily, in the United States, it is fairly straightforward with wherever it went. Come on. There's a ton in here. Okay, so back to Schedules Direct. And you just set it your user information, your password, and then you tell it which lineup you're using. There's a couple different ones here, um, but mine is just going to be that one. If you have an antenna, perform an EIT scan and that'll get a lot of your information over the air. And set up the frequency for cable, it's US cable. Same thing for all the other ones. All I did was I just selected which uh, data lineup I have. And I would recommend doing a different input at least a different input name for every type of input you have. So like I said, for my HD home run, my HD home run and my qualm are actually using the same signal. I just separated it this way so I can know real fast what tuner I'm using. Uh, really, all the channels are going to be the same. My set-top box is my HD PVR, and that's uh, getting most of my channels. That gets all the premium HD stuff that the qualm stuff can't get. And my analog is the HVR1600 plugged directly into my cable. And that just gets my basic channels 2 through like 70 something. And all of them are an analog, but they help because if my set-top box is using, let's say, Disney Channel, uh, I can't use the set-top box if it's recording something. But if I want to watch something else on maybe Discovery Channel, not HD, I can use that the analog channel for that. So these are our sources. The sources are set up now. And like I said, it's as easy as going to Schedules Direct, figuring out you just put in your zip code and what actual provider you have. The input connections is actually where we tell which card uses what source. And so for me, I have my, here's my HD PVR. It has three inputs, composite, S-video, and component. I only have component plugged in. And my I can name it here, HD PVR. My video source is my set-top box, and you can see you can just cycle through them here. 
For the HD PVR, this is one that has one extra step on it. It's an external channel change command. And this allows you to, if you have a cable box, cable box plugged directly in, it allows you to change channels on the cable box. For me, it plugs directly into my, I think it's a Motorola DCH3200. It's a standard Motorola box that Time Warner Cable gives out, and it has two FireWire ports on the back. So I plugged FireWire into my computer. I didn't have to do anything else to get it to actually recognize, which is a big step up from where MythTV used to be. And I used this MythChanger command. And I actually had to download the MythChanger program because for some reason in MythBuntu, the default one wasn't working. So there's a whole thread or a whole forum over at uh, Ubuntu forums for this. And someone made this MythChanger command and the FC is just just stands for my Motorola box. That's the type of box it is. And then I think the, oh no, that's fast. And then C was for the Motorola box. I don't remember, but it's in the forums. It's really not hard to figure out. All you got to do is drop the uh, script in a in a folder, tell it to be executable, and then allow this to change the channels. From here, uh, on the HD PVR specifically, I don't scan for channels because it would take forever to change all my cable box channels. And it still will grab video even if it, I don't have the video in the cable box. So I just said fetch channels from listing source and I went through manually later. And then you can set your starting channel, just make it something that is available. Input priority, this is for recordings. And so if you want this uh, tuner to be a higher priority than say an HD home run, you can set this to I believe up to like 25 or something like that. So I'm leaving them all at zero and I actually set my priorities and tuner uh, tuner preferences while I'm setting up the recordings. You can leave these to generic. That's the HD PVR. My HD home run gets I actually named my displays HD HR0 and HD HR1 and my source is from Schedules Direct and I already named that and I don't use quick tune tuning on this because I find it has some weird errors when it's trying to tune real fast. Uh, scan for channels is something you're going to need to do on these. I'm going to go over that later because it's a long process and I will show you that in another part. Um, so we're just going to finish, input group that's fine. HD Home Run is exactly the same. Uh, just I just named display name is different, but you don't even need to scan scan for channels on the second one because it'll have exactly the same as the first. My analog tuner, you can see all the inputs it has: S Video One, Composite One, S Video Two. Mine's a tuner. I'm using it for the analog. Here's my I just named it analog. There's no tuner change command because there's no external device that has to change and this one you would also want to scan for channels as well as the very bottom one my DVB source which is the digital tuner on the HVR so that's you just you can go through and oh I didn't I don't think I showed you when the for the video source is actually where you set which source you have going to this device and so that's how I do that channel editor is after you scan for channels you can edit what information is there. I'm going to show you how to do that a different way and storage directories is this is where you're actually storing all your info all the recordings everything else uh, so by default I have a recordings directory here and I actually have this uh, there's a another a second hard drive that's actually mounted to var lib myth TV and so in this directory it thinks that it is I mean, it doesn't care where it is, but it's just going to a second hard drive. So I have more space on there. Same with all this other stuff, live TV, var lib, myth TV, dash live TV. For your live TV buffer, it throws it in there. Uh, database backups, right there. Uh, videos, trailers, cover art, fan art, screenshots. This stuff is a lot more used in newer skins of MythTV and I expect MythTV 0.23 to have to use this a lot more as well and trailers there's a plugin for Apple trailers if you want to download them it's pretty straightforward for that so that's all of the general setup I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of here if you have a tuner set up if you haven't set the channels it'll give you a warning and say hey it's not set to start on a channel that exists uh, if you 
I'll watch the other part on how to scan channels and I'll show you how to do that. But otherwise you can just say, no, I know what I'm doing. And if this is the master backend, you'll want to run MythFill database. MythFill database gets all your channel information. It's the script that goes out, points to schedules direct and downloads all the information that you want. Hit OK there. It needs to run with privileges. So input our password and ask you if you want to run it. I'll say OK for right now. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and say OK. It's going to grab a whole bunch of stuff. This is going to take a while. Now this is actually a remote accession on my box, so it's going to look a little funky. But it's going to do this for uh, 15, 20 minutes or so. Um, so just let it run. Go get something to eat and do something else for the time being. I'm just going to pause this recording for now, and we'll pick it up when it's done.